Hey, I'm Sarah. This is Behind the Design, and I'm sharing my top three favorite design features in each room from Sarah Off the Grid Season 2. Let's talk behind the design on the kitchen. Where do I start? Obviously, in a kitchen, there is so much to talk about, but I want to start by talking about layout because I think that getting a good layout is the key to success in a kitchen. So often as designers, we rely on CAD and computer drawings to bring our vision to life. But maybe you don't have that skill and maybe you don't have access to it and you're wondering where to start. Well, I'm going to tell you how this kitchen was designed because you know what I didn't use? I didn't actually use CAD. I designed this kitchen. I was flying back. I did a home show in Calgary and I was on a very late night flight on a Saturday night and I got out some lined paper and I literally sketched out this kitchen and that is the kitchen we built. And I just want you to think about this because if you have an idea, you can make it happen and it doesn't have to rely on computer drawings. A kitchen is always about a puzzle. And Tommy said years and years ago, he's like, you are so good at kitchens. Like you love figuring out where all the pieces of the puzzle go. And it's absolutely true. But the key for me is I want every kitchen to look different than the last kitchen I did. Let's think about my Sarah's cottage kitchen, my rental cottage kitchen, my kitchen at home, my kitchen that I did for Sarah Off The Grid season one, and now here we are, Sarah Off The Grid season two. The key for me is never do the same thing twice. Every kitchen renovation is a big investment, and that means it's an opportunity for you to think about what you look like in a kitchen. What is the personality you are trying to achieve? And one of the key features for me when working with kitchens is I like to make maximum use of the cabinetry and I like to create unique and different surfaces. So a dual height island is often a priority for me. And I love the idea of using wall mounted cabinets. So taking what you would normally hang on the wall above the counter and instead turning them into a china cabinet. And this is sort of like a buffet, servery, and it is great storage because you end up with a raised area that hides all the mess that's in the sink. If you are a messy cook, this is what you want if you live in an open concept home. You do not want your guests sitting at the pretty table looking at all the pots and pans. So check out how this raised area hides the sight line of the sink and whatever's sitting on the counter behind it. I think it's a great idea. But the other thing I love about it is it makes setting the table really easy. All of your dishes, all of your entertaining elements, your placemats, everything can be stored in this high cabinet and go directly onto the dining table. So this is easy peasy, plus it's functional. Now let's look at what's happening over on the range wall. This is a key favorite element of mine because this is about the hack. This is about what we did with existing in-store cabinetry, which I painted, but then we trimmed it all to elevate it. So we used solid wood surrounds that acted as the framed gables. Instead of using the in-stock, in-store gables, I do custom gables. These are all mitered on all the corners and the neat idea that we added was we took a standard cabinet and then look, we built the frame larger around it and what it does is it offers an open storage shelving solution. It extends the height of the cabinets and it gives this custom touch to our range wall. Last element that I want to talk about. Okay, I have two more things to talk about in this kitchen. Bear with me. I know this is a lot, but kitchens are important and I want to make sure you guys get all the information you need and I want you to understand what I was thinking about. I have to talk about the backsplash because this marble, this is this thing I never say, this marble for me is the bomb, okay? I am crazy bananas about this marble. I always wanted it that you would, if you were walking up the street, you can see into the house. I wanted something that when you stand and look at the kitchen is just this big, amazing reveal. And so often we talk about the backsplash being the jewelry of the kitchen, if we think about it being the jewelry, sometimes we splurge and we spend a little bit more on that backsplash. And I thought, what if instead of spending the money on the tile and the tiler install, what if we just did a slab? What if we just bought one piece of stone and said, this is art? I admit, 
finding the piece of marble was super challenging because I desperately wanted to make the right choice because I believe this is a forever choice. I did. I found the right piece. I'm completely in love with this marble. So yay for that. And I'd say the last little element that is what I think is super cool that I want you to think about whether there's a way you want to incorporate this into your own home. Let's talk about these slats. I incorporated this banded slatted detail on the underside of the island and also wrapping around the vent hood. This panel detail is achieved using inexpensive poplar strips. They're available in your big box store. They cost about $2.50 each and they come in four foot lengths. So as long as you can work with a four foot length, you can figure out what kind of pattern you want. Vertical, horizontal, diagonal. You can see I've also used a treatment similar to this to make the staircase surround in the living room mud room come to life. I want you to think about how you can embrace the everyday, the average, and how you can make it awesome. Because I started with a big box kitchen, little slats of wood, and look where we've ended up. We've ended up with a kitchen that I have to say, I'm super proud of, and I completely dig. I hope you dig it too.